five, four, three, two, one. Hello, we're the FPCC High Flyers. Uh, my name is Price and this is Wayson. Uh, we're going to show you a little bit about a rocket we built here today. Um, we'll just jump right in, start right at the, up at the top here. So this is the nose cone. Um, as you can see, it's painted just like the rest of the rocket. Um, on the forward bulkhead here, what we had to do was go ahead and uh, put epoxy putty and make kind of a lip around here and push the bulkhead in and then use liquid epoxy on the top. And then right onto that we screwed our eye bolt with the cable. And if you look closely, there are these little holes and these are for the shear pins that will install. And there's three of them up here. And that's pretty much all that's to that. Now if we pull the next airframe apart, this part here contains the main parachute. Now this is a 48 inch parachute. Uh, nothing fancy really. And that'll come out. And of course we got protective wadding to keep it from starting on fire when the ejection charges launch. Okay, we'll move right on down. Um, let's not forget that there is a pressure release hole here and this is about a 3 16 inch hole and that's just so the rocket doesn't blow apart from the change in pressure when it's going up. So now we have our eBay and if you look on the top of the eBay here you have the little bowl for the ejection charge and then you have the two terminals to connect the ejection charge to which run inside and the eBay here. So we'll go ahead and pull that out. And as you notice, it's the same on the other side here. All right, so now here we have an exploded view of the eBay. And within the eBay, it's a pretty simple setup. We have our altimeter mounted just right here. Along with that, we have a power switch, which is just a simple on-off switch and a 9 volt battery. Now coming out of here is the power and the switch and then out from this side is a connector which will connect inside the eBay to the ejection charges. And as you can see this is all just mounted on a wood sled on rails here. And one more thing we did add to the battery, you see there's a wood stop back here to keep it from moving this way. We also put a metal post so it can't go this way either once it's installed. And the battery's just held in with Velcro here. So that battery should not be going anywhere. And to hold this switch in, we just used, again, epoxy putty. And the altimeter is mounted on screw posts that are epoxied into the wood also. Now if we move to the eBay here, you can see this outside hole has two purposes. First, it's so we can get to this switch, and second, it also acts as a pressurization equalization hole. Now inside the eBay here is all the wiring for the ejection charges. Just simple plug-in. And then on the bulkheads on either side, you can see that we used epoxy clay to hold these eye bolts from going anywhere. That's so when the parachute hits, it's not going to take that off on either one. Okay, so now we'll move down to the lower airframe tube, and there's quite a bit more going on with this one. First, if we look on the outside here, we have our camera mounted. It's just under a little protective cover here that will be taped on a little better when we launch. Right now it's just set there, and that this is actually our camera that we'll use. It's just a small little camera and it'll watch the fins on the way up, pointing down. Uh, moving down from there, 
we have indicated here the center of gravity and the center of pressure, which are both very important. Um, look, and we'll go ahead and we'll do the parachute now. So we got some more protective wadding to protect it. Now this is the drogue chute. This is just a very small, uh, I believe it's an 18 inch parachute that should deploy first right at ap Apogee. And that's about all that's to that. We'll move down now to the fin fillets, which are pretty smooth as you can see. What we had to do with these is in the inside we used liquid epoxy on the bottom of the fins and then we had to use epoxy putty around the fins and on top of that to give it a the nice clean finished we use wood filler and that wood filler has no structural integrity it's just to make it look nice and then of course we have our rail buttons which guide the rocket as it's leaving the launcher and then if we look at the back here this is our engine mount and we actually have a 54 millimeter engine mount with a 38 millimeter adapter and this is just for the competition we're in requires a much smaller engine than what we have and if we look down here at the bottom of the engine mount you can see that we also used epoxy putty to hold it in and then of course liquid epoxy on the rings on the inside. Whatever is excess on there will come off when you slide this over the top, and you'll just it hurt. Yes. yes. And by the way, if you if you do that and roll it on the table, you'll see. Okay, this is a delay. If you grease this, it won't light. Getting the point? Yep. All right. The reason that I'm telling you this is because tomorrow you're doing this on your own. So you might want to read the instructions, and then between the two of them, it's not really that hard. Just put the nozzle in. Oh, half closure. You got this. Nothing to it. Okay. Oh, shit. 